What's up guys, Johnny Sedum here. We're going out to explore some deeper waters today and then we're gonna move in and see if we can't get on some lobsters. And today with me, I have Captain Chris Doyle at the helm. We've got Luke on board. First time out with the Johnny Jigs crew. And everybody knows this guy. He's the mystery man yeah, that's, that's in me. every single huge YouTuber's back uh, camera, YouTube <laughs> channel, killing fish, Timmy C.S. So, we'll see you guys on the water. We're just a few guys that decided to pursue our passion as we hit destination fishing spots in our local waters out of Pompano Beach, Florida. We want to fill you in on what we have learned along the way. So guys, if you're new to our channel, uh, welcome. Um, my name is Johnny Statham. This is my good friend Chris Doyle. And we are slow pitch jigging specific, even though we do a lot of other styles of fishing, that's something that we love dearly. And I just wanna thank our longtime viewers, our followers that you know watch almost all of our videos. Thank you so much, we love you guys. Thanks for uh, being a part of what we're doing. And for the new people, just a little background on us. Um, Chris and I, as well as uh, Will Crane, I'll show you Will Crane in a little picture here, um, started Johnny Jigs um, about five or six years ago and it was just it was just something to enjoy offshore fishing. It wasn't supposed to be um, as serious as it's gotten but I could tell you that um, at this point it's a full-time gig for us so um, I've actually uh, given up a uh, construction company that I own to make this a full-time thing because I love it so dearly uh, Chris left his job and even turned down a six-figure job to make this a full-time gig for himself and then also just a little bit into our personal life uh, Chris has some great news to share with you guys yeah we're coming up on week four of a newborn baby I had my first son on September 21st maybe we'll clip in a little picture of the Hunter Havens Doyle and uh, he's beautiful and he's healthy and we're already starting to groom him to uh, come out here and jig with us He's ready. Yeah. This re he's already. <laughs> he will be ready. We've got him packaging jigs already, yeah. sending them out already. Right. But uh, so I'm pretty excited to have my buddy out with me. It's been a four week um, of torture for him at home with a newborn, yep. and I'm sure he's happy to be out. First too. one. Thanks, Mama. <laughs> uh, but uh, we're 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 going out of our home inlet here, Hillsboro Inlet in Pompano Beach. It's actually been a mo a while since we uh, since we did this and we came out here, and uh, yep. we, we got our deep drop stuff here, and we're gonna go explore. Uh, some deeper water granted you know the golden tile area but we're really hoping the current's okay and we can push beyond that get a little bit past a thousand feet and just play around jigging in the deep water with Tim and Luke and then uh, once we work up a good sweat we're gonna roll into the shallows and do a dive and see if we can't get some bugs we had some reports yesterday uh, Will Crane and Eddie went out um, and the current was good yesterday they were uh, able to deep drop um, the conditions were conducive to deep dropping, so that's our hopes for the day. So we'll see you guys on the water. All right, guys, we just hit our first drift, and we're in about a thousand feet of water, so. Our speed over ground is 1.6. We've got maybe like a six knot wind that is pushing us a bit east. So our drift is gonna be slightly northeast. We're trying to hit a little ledge on the screen and I'm actually gonna put down an 800 gram jig to start off with. Um, I could go lighter, there's a possibility. Our speed over ground's pretty good, but I'm, I'm opting to go 800. I've got single hooks on the top and bottom. Um, I am gonna go manual this morning with a Rage 90. This is a Power Gear reel. And then I have the uh, Ocean Legacy Elementus Deep. This, this rod is actually rated up to a thousand grams. So if you guys wanna check out any of this gear, it'll be in the link below. But in the meantime, I'm gonna see if I can trick some fish into thinking that this is actually edible. There's bottom guys, that took a while to get down. But so traditionally guys, slow pitch, you're gonna put the rod right across your forearm like this, and then you're looking for that slow unload of your rod tip going up. But I can tell you that a lot of us in deep drop scenarios, especially when we're doing it 
a couple days in a row, this can get tiring. It can get very tiring. So you can kind of switch it up, put it in your hip right here and get that same unload. And really you're just switching up to a different group of muscles in order to pull the jig and put a motion and action onto the jig. All right, guys, we just hooked up on the first fish and uh, it was a very subtle hit on the bottom. Um, we had hope because Chris snagged up on the bottom, which means that we're on structure. Um, we can read the screen, you know, it's a dark red, which lets us know that um, we're on hard, hard bottom. But uh, this was a spot I was telling the guys I want to go hit. We tried out a few other things prior to that and then went ahead and moved over to this spot here. But I am still fishing the 800 gram all glow and this element is deep really unloads well um, with the all glow. And Chris actually behind me is fishing the um, Saltiga um, heavy, extra heavy, which is more of a traditional um, slow pitch outfit this one's pretty close but i'm using shorter outfits than than normal um i do like a long rod in deeper water for the sake that you get more movement on the jig um, but the shorter rod is a lot easier on your back so there's pluses and minuses to to using the shorter rod versus using the uh longer rod um i should be getting pretty close here um, like what, 400 feet? Manually cranking, I got power gear on, heavy jig, so um, I used single hooks. The reason why I use single hooks is I like to try and stay away from smaller fish, but it's not always the case. You know, sometimes you'll just get them and that's, that's just the way it goes. But, uh, very curious to see what was on this um, structure down there because we've never fished this spot before. Gotta be getting close, guys. Gotta be getting close. He's definitely giving me some head shakes on the way back up. Yeah. I'm gonna take it very gentle on him. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna back off. I might drag quite a bit. Um, that way when he pulls, he's allowed to just pull some line and not pull the hook. We don't wanna pull the hook. We just wanna pull line out of the reel. And what is that? Big black, big black belly rosefish, guys. Big black belly rosefish. That is that is a that is a beast of a black belly rosefish, guys. That's about as big as they get, as a matter of fact. Dude, that that could possibly be a state record. So we're gonna show you guys a little bit of what we are paying attention to on our Simrad. Uh, we have a split view going because we just have one screen here on the console, on the helm. Uh, we actually have our second screen on the front of the center console so the guys in the bow that are jigging can also have eyes on what's going on. So we're in uh, about 992 and this is our chart plotter over here and as you can see we are using uh seymour maps so seymour is giving us this mapped area uh we're in 990 feet uh, we're kind of approaching this nugget right here we've been catching black bellies on on our drift um, we didn't set up for this particular nugget, but you can see our drift angle and and once you get to know your drift angle uh, You go and use your mapping system to try to find Structure that is kind of in line with your angle so you can stay on it longer essentially Especially when you're out here in the deep water with two knots over the bottom John just kicked it in reverse. So that's why it's going up. We've been bouncing between 1 8 and 2 um you know, if we were targeting a very small hump in a thousand feet of water, you know, you, you almost need to have precision bombing and a lot of luck to, to hit that target. So getting something a little bit more substantial like this, like I said, this wasn't planned, but we might hit this outer edge uh, here. And uh, Seymour Maps is giving us eyes right now on, on what we're dropping on. So um, 
Uh, what we also do, also, if we wanted to really hit this, we'd probably set up down here and we always just tap where we think the angle is, maybe a little bit more to the right, right there. X marks the spot and then we'll drive the boat over to that X and then use that drift angle to take us right over it. So X marks the spot. Once we uh, got to that spot onto that X, we would just go over here and hit clear a cursor and just go back to uh, its natural state of gauging where the heading of the boat is. And uh, that's what's going on in our Simran. That's what we're paying attention to. Um, I'm zoomed in 3X right here on our sonar side. So uh, if I go all the way out, uh, you can see a little bit of that. Uh, I don't know. If you guys got a name for what this is, go ahead and comment in the comment uh, box below. I've heard, I've heard a lot of different interference, squids, you know, whatever, sargasm, I don't know. But we're zoomed in 3X so we can get a good visual on the bottom. Take a peek at our mapping. And uh, here comes Luke right here. Jake's coming back, Tim's in the water, John's in the water. So we're gonna bump this boat in reverse and get these lines vertical again. Here we go. Just tap bottom in 938. Rosie, that, that right there was most likely a Blackbird Belly Rosie strike. Couple bounces, and I got a 600 gram jig on, and so you, you feel, there, just bounced a little bit. Uh, you feel a 600 gram jig, which is what? It's a little over a pound. These black bellies, rosies, are, you know, one to two pound fish. And if you just did a couple jigs, you feel your jig, you feel your jig, and then all of a sudden your jig is like, all right, it's a little heavier. It's probably a black belly. We came out here, the four of us, Luke, Tim, Johnny, and myself, we actually made a game plan for two of us to put 600s on and two of us to put 800s on, um, just, to, just to make it happen. And so uh, I've got 15 pound test line on, I feel pretty confident I could bump down to 500 grams and be tapping bottom just the same because I have a 15 pound test braided line on. This is Daiwa J Braid Grand. I don't know what the millimeter is, but it's thin. It's like 0.17. And uh, it's doing really well for me, staying vertical, tapping bottom. That was a couple bounces, and we wanted to give you guys a little glimpse at this uh, extra, extra heavy Daiwa Saltiga rod, rated for 800 grams, um, working in the deep water. It's got a beautiful unload, and you really can fish up to 800 grams on it. Last little spot, I did have a pretty substantial wallop right on the bottom in like 875, and my braided line just pulled apart about 100, and 100 feet down. It just went wham, fish, and then gone. It's just guessing how that could have happened. You know, when I, when I, if I have a braid failure where it just pulls apart like that, braid was nicked, it was compromised. This is 15 pound test line, so it is not hard to do, and it's something that you're always concerned about. You want everything to be perfect, you know, out here. Timmy got something bigger back there. Go for it. Go there we for go. It. No, I want to see what you got. Then I'm going to follow up with Tim. Timmy, see us. We see you, bro. We see you. What do you got, Chris? Here we go. Oh, like, we got color. Black belly rosefish. Definitely put him in the cooler, man, because I, I can use some so, uh, black belly rosefish. Once but. again, we've said it before. 600 gram jig, small little delicious black belly rosefish, but you guys saw it. I felt the strike. I even felt them bounce a little bit, 900 feet down. And it's just the sensitivity of the slow jigging gear, uh, which is just absolutely incredible to be that in tune with what's going on 900 feet down. Oh, and in case uh, you haven't noticed, we're gonna highlight this a little bit, but what you're seeing is, uh, if you're familiar with our torpedoes, we've had a blue and pink torpedo with a gold head. For some reason, when we first made it, we stopped at 250 grams. Well, now she's going all the way up to 1,000. And here's the 600 gram blue-pink torpedo. 
You've seen it first, right here. Right. So, one quick tip I wanted to share here. Uh, it's probably pretty important and worth, and worth hearing. Um, we came out here and, and two of us chose to use 600 gram jigs, two of us chose to use 800 gram jigs. We threw our jigs in the water. We're all tapping bottom. It's all working just well. On that first drop, I might have been uh, I might have been the third or fourth person in the water. I think I was fourth. When it was when it came time for us to all reel in, I had one of the 800 gram jigs had a hook around my line. When uh, that angler was pulling it up, we had to unhook my line. And then as we continued to come up, the other 800 gram jig angler had both his hooks on my line. And we pulled those hooks off as carefully as we could. And we went about um, the next drop saying, hey, let's make sure the two 600 gram guys drop first and the two 800 gram guys, the heavier guys drop behind them to limit the risk of your 600 gram jig blowing into your 800 gram jig. Oh, I just missed him. <laughs> I got you, Bobby. Yeah. Let's see if I can get it back in his face. Yep. Sure is. Coming over the Smaller deck. than that. That's a taco, Luke. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. First one on the jig. There you go. Hold him up. Let's uh, take, take get into this corner right here, too, if you can. Take your time. You good. Let's see what you got there, little black man and roast fish. Yes, sir. First one on the 600 gram jig. Nice. You what? know, you know what happens whenever you catch your first black boy roast fish. What's that? You have to eat the eyeballs. Yep, eat it's the eyeballs. It's just tradition. <laughs> right. I did just make that up, but it's. Not <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say every time I catch a new fish, someone's like, "Oh, you gotta eat the heart. You gotta eat the eyeballs." <laughs> You gotta, you, gotta, you gotta floss your teeth with one of his spines. <laughs> I would rather do that than the apple. So, back to our chalk talk quick tip. <laughs> the lighter jigs, if tossed after the heavier jigs, run the risk of getting blown into the heavier jigs because the heavier jigs are gonna stick vertical better than a lighter jig. So I had hooks around my line in those in, on that first drop. So on the second drop, we said as a team, two 600 gram guys drop first, 800 gram guys go next. Our next three drops worked flawlessly. However, our last spot, as I was saying before, I hooked up pretty big and my braid just pulled apart. So the likely uh, scenario was that maybe one of those hook barbs nicked my line, allowed it to pull apart only about 100 and 100 feet, feet down, I lost all that line, I lost the jig, and I lost what felt like a pretty incredible fish. And so uh, definitely something, you know, when you come out here to stay stay mindful of, you know, think about the game plan, think about what jig that your, your fellow anglers are, are using, and then you guys even discuss maybe executing something where the uh, lighter jig guys drop first and the heavier jig guys just funnel in the bot, the right, right behind them. There we go, hey, nice hey, black hey. belly. There's Tim. There we go, Tim. Ooh. I, did I call that or what? Oh, that lot. looks a lot heavier. That's that a lot bigger? There we go, bud. Here we go, Tim. You got the one, buddy. Oh, yeah. Is that a good one, dude? Yeah. My man. It's a lot, lot heavier. Tim's tight. Luke just put a nice black belly rosefish on the boat. I think Tim's got something a little bit bigger. And we've also got... Christopher Daddy Doyle. Daddy, Daddy Who's Doyle. Who's your dad? <laughs> your uh, Hunter. Hunters. I know. You know, I waited, I waited a very long time to be able to say that to my my two boys, uh, Jason and Eli. I would say, Who's your daddy? And my boys are like, You're our daddy. Dude. Why do you keep saying that, Daddy? You know you're our daddy. <laughs> I just want to know who's your daddy. <laughs> now it's your turn. That's right. Go. Talk to me, Chris. Hey, we got a black belly rose fish. Pretty a stud. Yeah, he's a good one. That's why he's a little heavier. Yeah, he's definitely a decent size. Yeah. All right, so well, there we go. That's the species we like. 
There's a fun trick too, that's why we love. They're not just split ring pliers, right? Grab these fish, you know, and I can do a nice beautiful catch shot. I'm actually holding him with these pliers. We do all of our de-hooking with these pliers and they're wonderful split ring pliers as well. He's, so. he's a little pinker than the other Ooh, ones, right? Scared me. Like he's not as, he's not as red. Yeah, yeah. Looking. Yeah. But he's a decent size. So again, that's that pink blue 600 gram torpedo, hot off the press, brand new in the larger sizes. And uh, right. nice. Let's see what Tim's got going on back here. Like I was here. saying, I'm just gently guiding this fish. I'm not pumping the rod, jerking really hard, just a slow, steady wind. Just gently guiding him up so that uh, he can come to the party. I got deep color down there. Deep color. Definitely feels a lot better than that minuscule little uh, rosy I caught just a little bit ago. What do we got, the guys? Nice big, what is that big, big rosy? rosy. Dude, big that, that is a big, big, big get the <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> that's bigger than what the one the I got freak? earlier. Are you serious? <laughs> that, that. Dude, that's got to be state record. I know though. we say this <laughs> every time. It's got to be state record. But that record. right there is the biggest black belly rose fish I've ever seen. <laughs> Tim, have you ever caught a black belly this big? I have not. I didn't know they uh, they came this big. This is absolutely the largest I've ever seen. So, so this fish, we've got it on the pogo grip, and we're reading. We got the wake rot dropping, but we're, say that that's the four. Wait, where's right the four? there is four. Yeah. Where is this line four? That's four. That's four. So then it's going to be just under four. It's going to be like four. three, seven, five. Or you can see four. Yeah. Yeah. And that's on the Johnny Jig 600 gram, but also you'll notice he's got one hook on top, one hook on bottom, and the hooks are not, um, they're not even as long as, as, as the assist cord's not even as long as the hook. So I want to say that, that Tim definitely has a state record. So that's going to be it for deep dropping on this video, but actually we're going to move in and look for lobsters here yeah. in South Florida. This is kind of a staple thing that we do here in South Florida is go out, um, get some lobsters and, you know, bring it home. We'll pinch the tail off. There's a million different ways to yeah. cook them. You're not supposed to talk about cooking them, Chris, before you actually catch yeah, them. Before you catch them. Oh, you man, know, we got, just... we're pretty confident we'll pull a few bugs out of a couple holes. But spine, yeah, Florida spiny tail lobsters. There's really not a better day. We've said this before. We did an early, early video we called Fish Dive. It did terrible in views, but man, we had a heck of a time and we got a whole bunch of bugs and there's not a better day going fishing, putting some fish in the box and then finishing it off with a nice cooling, refreshing dive yeah. and grab some lobsters to I'm, bring home too. I'm ready to get in the water. All right, we're at about 1,050 and uh, we're gonna go down and get some, some bugs. It'll be a long way down. We're cheating, we got tanks. <laughs> it's like using your electric reel. Right. Yeah. Right, store number. Now Scuba I've got tanks you. are the electric reels of the diving world. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go, man. Mask on. Air, air thing in mouth, ready for it. Mm. Yeah, go for it. Get, get out of here. Bye. Oh, I miss it. One down, two to go. How you doing, Luke? Go, bud. Where's my air? Chris, we're really far away from the balls. You gotta go way that way. Okay. I don't know how many, but I know that we did pretty good. My dive computer is leaking a little bit, so Chris, Chris and uh, Luke are still down there. But looks like we did all right. One, two, three, four, seven. five, six, seven. That was that was a um, joint effort between Chris and I. Had a couple get away from me, but I'm pretty pretty happy with. Uh, 
what I got in the bag so far. So we'll see how Chris and Luke are doing. Yeah, I go down there in that crevice that you're that you were you got a lobster and then you point it and I'm like, oh, there's another one. Right. And I I squeeze myself into this crevice and look under a ledge and there's the big green mouth of a moray eel. Right there. <laughs> I pulled back. I was like, oh god. No, there was there was More there was another, another lobster. lobster down there. And then here comes Luke out of the water. First open water dive. He is certified. <laughs> yep. But dude, we had a lobster. He's like. He's in a crack, a crevice. I don't even know how Luke got him in this position. I've never seen a lobster just sit there because he could go up or down whichever way, but he's jammed in there. Luke's got his tickle stick on one end and he's got his hand on the other. No, <laughs> like wedged in. Out, he was wedged <laughs> in there. Did we get it or no? Like, no, we Started didn't. We broke. So so I, I started hitting him with the tickle stick and and you see his tail poke out the other side which is right where luke's hand was yeah and i'm like luke's gonna grab this lobster luke's gonna grab it and then it goes <laughs> <laughs> I, wasn't trying, I wasn't sure what you were trying to get at so i didn't want to like mess up what you were doing get in your way so i was sitting there like do i grab it oh you did all right Doa. all right did you have a lobster hotel There's on the, you huh. no There's he stuck he got he put his bugs in here there's the Spanish. Sick. Sick. That's all awesome. Right, well, this is what well, Luke's holding right here. This is a Spanish lobster, and you can see they've got these uh white dots on them, and they're they're generally smaller. They're delicious. There's no season on these guys. You can actually catch them uh, much harder to catch. Very yeah, they they're they're kind of creepy, like they'll they'll hang upside down. Uh, and you know underneath the rocks down there and uh yeah it's pretty interesting pick up pick up another one i want to show them like a difference between a male and a female so so this is a female lobster and you can tell because she's got these um um little paddles right here on the tail and when the females are pregnant they'll actually hold it looks like a red batch of of eggs right in that area there and those are the ones that you got to throw back and then i'll show you a male luke's going to pick up one more that's a male yeah that's a male so you see it doesn't have like the little claws on it that first one might have been a male too but there's no there's no little claws on the on the fins right there so that's a male lobster but uh looks like we did good guys we got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven and then twelve including the uh the spanish lobster so so that that's a fantastic dive you know just for a one tank dive um i would i would dare to say that if we were doing two tanks today which is normally what we would do uh we probably would limit out so it's six per uh person on the boat but i'm very happy with what we have here it's more than enough for all of us to take home a couple for the fam guys i just want to dedicate this rock to willie biggs holding it down at the shop sacrificing so we can come out here and catch rocks from a thousand feet well, this one's for you, buddy.